Ciao. Or to give up your favorite foods. Are you on a diet that makes you eat burgers without the bun and won't let you get near a piece of birthday cake? Well, now... Do that right away so they hear the continuing argument. Yeah, yeah. And then make Thursday be the... Uh, Yes. Uh, the oh, wait, wait, what, 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 oh, see, now I have to pause for a moment. Allison Sheridan is here with us, everybody. Allison Sheridan, uh, she of the Nocella cast. What day is it? It is Wednesday. We've gotten halfway through the week without uh, letting you say what the Nocella cast is. I feel certain most people listening to this know, but for people who don't. It's a technology geek podcast with an ever so slight Apple bias. So I talk about all kinds of tech, tech stuff, but uh, it's it, always an Apple slant. Okay. And it comes out when? It comes out every single Sunday night for uh, 15 and a half years, coming up on 16. So 15 never missed years. a show. Yeah. I turned uh, Mac OS Ken turned 15 last week, by the way. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. That is you, fantastic. You say congratulations. <laughs> It's what? weird. Well, I mean, 15 was never like a goal or anything like that. And then next year we'll say congratulations as well. And it was like, you know, I've, I've said here before, my plan was to do it for six months. <laughs> so congratulations. Yeah. Why not? I so, don't think at all about how long I would do that. And I've never thought about that. I started a job in 1980, no, 1978. Mm-hmm. And everybody said, you what's your five year plan? And I don't have a plan. And I left the company 35 years later. Oh, there you go. Yeah. No, my plan was uh, I'll do this for six months and then get a job with CNET. That was my ah. plan. That was absolutely ah. my plan. And then somebody said, well, did you apply to CNET? <laughs> and I realize, you know, the error of my ways. But, you know. I got a step. So yesterday I said, uh, I asked you a question, but maybe two. I was like, which do you think we're going to get first uh, from Apple? VR, AR, that's one thing. Or the car, that's the second thing. And you spent nine minutes saying why you hate VR. <laughs> <laughs> why the subject irritates me. And then said, oh, we didn't even get to, you know, the things you asked me about. So... Uh, you say, or said yesterday, and for people who missed it yesterday, you can go back and listen. You said yesterday that you see a, a whole series of problems being solved by AR. And Potentially. Then, and then you said, and we didn't even get to the car. So I don't know which <laughs> one you want to talk about. Can you go ahead and answer my question first? The question I asked yesterday, which are we getting first? Something from Apple that we can put on our heads and either do VR and AR stuff or something from Apple that we can drive? I would would have to give it a sixty percent, sixty forty. It's going to be VR AR. Okay. Or we're completely wrong, and it's neither one of those. Well, I mean, that's a possibility too. I mean, I think both of these things are coming from Apple at some point. We will see something in cars, whether we get one or not. I don't know. We know they're going to do something in AR because Tim Cook gets so excited talking about it. I mean, he's made it clear that that's the direction they're going. Whether either of these things are the thing that Dan Riccio is going to work on is a whole other thing entirely. But well, no, and there's also been obviously a, a whole lot of uh, obvious things done of having uh, the depth sensing stuff in our phones that are allowing little little dorky AR sort of things to happen, right? Right. Yes. All right. So, what so are some of the problems some that you? What are some of the problems that you see being solved by an actual AR implementation? Well, so I was complaining about VR in the context of of surgery, and I could see AR being useful in the context of surgery. So you've got a 3D model of somebody's heart that's been done with, you know, an ultrasound or something like that, and you know what you've got to fix on it. And then uh, having that be overlaid as you're doing surgery of what you're actually trying to do, uh, or you're down in a mine and you're you've got a piece of equipment that's broken. And uh, this this was an actual example from CES a couple of years ago was these goggles that somebody could wear who's down in a mine and they've got to fix a piece of equipment and the person up above overlays the the instruction set from the manual that allows them to see the parts what it's supposed to look like in order to be able to tell how to put it back together or something like that um you know overlaying fake stuff over real stuff there's there's a lot of great context i like the idea of being able to you walk up to me and i can't remember your name and it tells me right just Mm -hmm. something simple like that 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 would be life-changing because i'm terrible at that a lot of people like that one that that got mentioned i want to say last week as a a possibility as well Mm -hmm. i like the idea of nutritional information I like the idea, honestly, but it's because I did Weight Watchers for a while. I like the idea of being able to, so I could put in my own formula or whatever, and then if I look at the nutritional information on a package when I'm at the store, 
it would come up and tell me how many points it is. But that's mm. so incredibly specific. And I wonder if that's the kind of thing at the same time, I was going to say, I wonder if that's the kind of thing where you decide the kind of thing you want to do and you program it in and then it gives that to you. But that's just a recipe for the technology to never take off. You need it to be simple, I think. It needs to have, like we talked about yesterday with VR or like I meant to talk about yesterday. I don't know if I did or not. You need a killer app or you need a couple of killer apps, I think, to say, yeah, this is the reason that you need this thing. Kind of like... Because yeah. the iPhone put the, uh, you know, put the internet in your pocket and it put a thousand songs in your pocket or whatever it was. The iPhone did the things that it did. And it was obvious, I need that thing. And now, of course, I mean, if you tried to go back to the original iPhone today, you'd probably just pitch it in the river because it would be so underpowered compared to the kind of stuff that we now expect it to do. But it has to start, I think, with some kind of killer something. It can't just be, oh, look, you can look around and see stuff. Yeah. Um I, I, I do want to get back to what you said about the um, uh, looking at nutrition labels. The sad mm -hmm. part about that, that would be fantastic. I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. In the state of California, they made a, a law or a regulation or something that said that they had on big chain restaurants had to tell you how many calories were in things. Yeah. And people hated it. Yeah. I thought it was spectacular. I mean, I found out that there's nothing you can eat other than seared ahi that won't kill you at the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. Any yeah, salad is like 2,000 calories. And so I thought it was great to have that information. Yes. But people hated it and they, and they made it go away. So uh, we're never going to get that. They made it go away? <laughs> well, no, I mean, here's the thing, though, because augmented reality is, is your own sort of reality augmented. So, uh, okay. so yes, you, could have you, it. you would get that. It would just be a thing that you would turn on. That's what I'm saying. Like... I, I don't want to see everybody's name when I walk up to them because I want the joy of remembering myself. So I'd go ahead and turn that you know function off. I'm not looking for facial recognition from my AR glasses to tell me who that person is. Mm. I do want to look at it. If I look at a nutritional information thing, I do want that to give me more information. So, I mean, I assume that some of it would be because it's still your reality. <laughs> so I would assume that you could decide what you want and what you don't. Otherwise, you're just looking at, you know, complete information overload, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't go for uh, you didn't go for directions. Um, I definitely like that one. I feel like everybody mentions it. Yeah. And I had already said the one that everybody else mentions, which is knowing people's names. So I didn't want to sound too trite, but I, I'm not a good person to talk to about the imagination of what can be done. Um, <laughs> I know I listen to that's what uh, pisses you off so much about VR. Sorry, that's got to be it. Uh, anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Maybe. Actually, somebody did make a, a really good point uh, to me once about VR. I worked in the 80s on a project for the uh, an F-18 simulator program where we had a, 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 a fake cockpit. Actually, mm -hmm. it was a real cockpit, but it was ours, uh, modified, that we put into the middle of a giant 40-foot diameter sphere. And the imagery was projected on the inside of this sphere. And when you flew the, the, the jet you would actually be fooled into thinking you were, you know, your brain was convinced that you were actually moving when you weren't. And uh, somebody pointed out that that is now something you can do in a VR headset for not $40 million, right. which is what, what, you know, our, our system cost. And it would look better than flying through a Dire Straits video, too. I've heard of Dire Straits. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Well, no, but the Did video. Did they do Money for Nothing and Chicks for Free? That's the video that I'm talking okay. about. Yeah. Which, that you know, was the first thing I ever heard uh, played. We played on our uh, um, I, our Mac 512K in 1984. Wow. Okay. That's <laughs> a lot to unpack there, but we'll move on. Hey, we're going to get to the end without getting to the car. Talk to me about the car thing. <laughs> um, I... I Again, I'm not good at imagining what can be and what will be, and I I just can't picture Apple actually doing a car. Mm -hmm. I don't. I have trouble imagining that that's what they're going to do. They're not, they're not going to build a drivetrain, right? That's well, not going to be what they're going to do. I don't know. I don't have a drivetrain in a in an electric vehicle, and of course this will be an electric vehicle. But I just I don't know. I just can't picture them doing that. I could picture them doing the in car system, 
Mm-hmm. But I don't know. That's kind of small and not that interesting either, right? Well, there are the uh, there are a few analysts. Katie Huberty, I think, is one of them in particular, who says that where Apple really shines is where Apple does everything. I, I go back to uh, what Tim Cook said on last week's earnings call. Um, they the things that they look for in building a, a new product are: is it something that they would use? Is it a big enough market to get into? And can they do the thing that they like to do where they do hardware, software, and services? Because that's where that's where the real magic happens. I mean, so I hear what you're saying at the same time, and not to pick on your car, but, you know, 10 years ago, Tesla, I mean, if anybody had said Tesla 10 years ago, you'd have been like, you're crazy. It's Ford, GM, Fiat, Chrysler. I mean, there are established car players. I mean, you've got the, uh, who, who did the, um, who did the Prius? Toyota? Toyota, yeah. yeah. You had them moving towards that. Tesla didn't exist, I want to say, either 10 or 15 years ago, certainly 15 years ago. And mm-hmm. yet, I mean, you know, they made room for themselves and then started to fill that room up. I mean, so it doesn't seem to me that it's beyond the pale for Apple to do it. Now, I, I am with you. I don't know whether it's going to be a car that you and I could buy. I don't know if it'll be a service or what, but I know there are lots of people who are really excited about the possibility. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I like I was starting to say that I don't think with the imagination of the of, that a lot that other people do. Um, mm-hmm. uh, oh, I had his name at the tip of my tongue, and then we changed subjects, and I lost it. Um, Alex Lindsay, mm-hmm. he sees things like you know what I wish. I wish my pan on the stove knew what temperature it should be because I told it I want to cook an egg, and it's like. Wow, that really would be cool. I never thought of that. But he thinks of those things. He sees the future and what the future can be. And mm-hmm. I don't see it. I'm just not a prognosticator on the future. So the talking about what they would do with a car, I can't picture it. I just It just doesn't seem probable to me, but not much does. <laughs> 